And this is that the Maryland Department of Transportation announced that it was removing from its plan to install toll funded hotline lanes, excuse me, between I-270 and I-95. They're gonna keep the hot lanes from uh, the bridge up to 70, but they're not gonna expand the hot lanes along the beltway over to I-95. So Ron, this hot lane proposal was very unpopular with Montgomery County leaders and Prince George's County leaders. Now who can take blame, or excuse me, who can take credit for the reversal in the policy? You know, I, I think it's a collective effort. I think the, um, the larger view was the environmental impact, whether or not um, the hot lanes as they were proposed were really beneficial to the counties that they were intended to cross. Nobody wants to pay more in tolls and taxes and you know, bridge expenses. While we do need to repair our infrastructure, that this might not have been the best way to merge those two ideas. You know, the science needs to support that you know, increasing or expansion would be a good idea versus the environmental impact and how it would possibly uh, force people to move further out by expanding that. So um, I don't know if anyone can take credit. I think the idea had been kicked around long enough that everybody just got tired of it. All right, so Lori, I'm going to ask you a question. And in that question, you're going to tell Ron why he's wrong. All right? <laughs> oh, so, boy. <laughs> so, Lori, I hate to introduce politics into a politically charged decision. It has nothing to do with the, the environment. Perhaps Governor Hogan noted the lack of support and decided it wasn't worth the political capital that he was going to get tarred with. And he kicked the capital beltway congestion which we're, we're going to have to live with for another 10 years. He kicked that can down the highway to his successor. Yeah, I think the hot lanes got a lot of hot air from all these activists and environmentalists. Uh, and it just wasn't a political move, a good political move for Hogan to make if he's still considering running for president. Um, but I actually think that it may be a smart move. I'm sorry to say this, um, Casey, but, um, <laughs> but you know, um, so much has changed with coronavirus. And I've been hearing um, uh, a lot of people saying that the government workers are not gonna be working in their offices. A lot of them are gonna be working from home. So I think what might be a, a prudent thing is to wait until after coronavirus, until any major decisions are made and see what happens to the traffic in a, in a few years. Uh, and then revisit it. Um, I, you know, I want to see those lanes built. I thought it was a great idea, but you're going to keep, we're going to keep getting a lot of, um, you know, pressure. And, um, and maybe now we need to just look at what's going on and, um, and make and reevaluate and, and Republicans can keep working on it and have better arguments to, um, to go after everyone else. Well, it wasn't, you know, I don't even, I, I, this was, I, I think, a fundamental business issue and a, life, and, a, and a life issue for Montgomery County residents. We are going to be strangled in traffic in 10 years. You know, people think that we're, nobody's going back to work. Trust me, they're going to go, end up going back to work. It may not be next year, yeah. and, but there will be a creep. The reason, yeah, the, reason the, the cap, free capital of, or the capital of the free world is getting bigger and bigger is because we are capital of the free world and people will keep coming here and we are going to be choking on traffic and these gutless politicians <laughs> should know better and should plan for the future. When we come back from this short break, why are more women running for political office? Lori and Ron are going to give you the answer. Stay tuned. 